Hey there folks, so it's now been one week that I've been working on the pedal steel and I thought I would let you know what I've been working on, some things I've been thinking about, and maybe some things that can help you if you're working on a new instrument as well. So let's just get into it. If you'll remember last week, the main thing I was working on is just playing a bunch of different chords all over the neck, just so I'm familiar with just different positions for major chords. So this is what it sounded like when I was trying to do that last week. And now here's where I'm at this week with that same exercise. I won't bore you with the entire exercise up and down the neck, but as you can tell, I made some improvement. And there was one really simple way that I did that. And it was basically just doing that slowly with a metronome every day, almost every day. I didn't practice yesterday, but that's okay because I practiced almost every day since then and I practiced today and I'll practice tomorrow. And in the long term, most days I'm going to practice. And that's really what's important is that you're focusing on the long term, making a tiny bit of progress every time you practice. And what's nice about this being the beginning of the process for this instrument for me is it's not that hard to make a little bit of progress every day. So it's a lot of fun. Later on the line, when things get a little bit more difficult or we've got more experience, it's actually going to be a little harder to make a little progress every day. So we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But for now, uh, I can take this exercise and add some pedals and levers to play some different chords because I don't need to just move up and down the neck. I can also use the, the pedals and levers. One of the coolest things about the pedal steel to uh, change the key that I'm playing in um, and that's kind of how you get some of these sounds that you might be familiar with. Which I don't really know how to use yet, but I learned another exercise and it allows me to do something like this. You notice how that last chord didn't really quite sound in tune? Well, here's the challenge. It's only pressing down two pedals at the same time, which is relatively easy to do uh, these other two chords. I'm playing G, C, D, and then I go back to G higher up, but I have to press a pedal and I have to move a lever and it's kind of an uncomfortable position. So most of the time when I do it, it doesn't really come out exactly how I want. So the important thing here is, again, I'm going to ignore all the other stuff for a moment because the other stuff went okay. The other stuff actually sounded fine, but I really need to focus on that moment that usually doesn't work out very well. And that's going from the some version of this D chord to this G chord. And it's really because I don't quite get the bar in the right place and I don't quite get the pedal down and the lever over at the same time. So uh, if the, the less comfortable I am doing that, the more likely it is that I'm gonna be slightly out of tune and slightly out of time and all kinds of problems. So that's the thing that I wanna focus on. So the way I need to work on that is probably just to play between that chord D and next chord G. It's getting a little better. That's gonna be the thing that I'm gonna be working on the most this week probably, is just getting that just right. But here's what's cool. I already have enough information, even with that one chord that isn't quite happening the way I want it to yet. Uh, I have enough information where I can play some songs, right? Because if I've got G, C, and D, then I can play a lot of country songs. I can't play anything cool on these country songs. I can't play any cool licks can't do anything special other than play the right chord at the right time, which by the way is kind of the most important thing when it comes to playing in a band or playing music in general is you gotta play the right chord at the right time. And that's a huge piece of it. So the other thing I've been practicing, once I got my original chord exercise up to speed and I started messing around with the pedals a little bit, 
I decided, well, I can probably play along with some recordings, not doing anything interesting, but using the exact same exercise that I've been doing uh, along with a recording. So I'm just gonna put on a random recording that I like that has simple chords, and then I'm going to play uh, just the right chord at the right time, and that's practice. And you can do that with a lot of things. You can do that with any recording you know. You don't have to play the real you know, language of the pedal steel. I don't have to play any special licks. I don't have to do any of that right now. All I need to do is play the right chord at the right time. So let's do that. Let's put on some music and just play the right chord at the right time. Okay, so that's not much, but it's something. It's the right chords at the right time, obviously. And I'm pressing the pedals and I'm moving this in different places. I mean, I'm doing a lot of the things that a pedal steel player does. It's just a really simple version of it. But if you can make some sort of connection to what the music really is, then not only are you gonna better understand what the role of the instrument is, but you're actually gonna have more fun. Those exercises that I was doing before, as a musician, I know what the value of those are. I know how useful it is to be able to move around the instrument and know where different chords are. But if you don't have that experience, it might be hard to see how useful all that stuff is and feel the motivation to keep going. So try doing that. Try connecting some of the things that you're working on to the music in whatever way you can. It doesn't have to be playing all the stuff that professional musicians play. It doesn't even have to be anything that a professional musician would play. It just has to be something like knowing what the first note is, or playing the right chord at the right time. That's a good one, for instance. And along the way, you might be uh, inspired to try to do something that you've heard someone on the instrument do. For instance, I don't know, I haven't spent any time really thinking about the technique of uh, vibrato with the bar here, that kind of thing. I know that I'm not doing it the way that it sounds on the records. It's something and I'm kind of trying it and I'm getting some information from that. Even though I don't really know what I'm supposed to do, I'm getting some information just from the feedback of trying something and saying, well, that's not quite it. So maybe I should look into that and research it. If I hadn't really thought about it, if I hadn't tried it, then I might not go online and Google something like pedal steel vibrato or something like that. And I might not realize that I need to learn something about it. So it's worth trying. Another example, is when I'm going from, for instance, this F chord to C, I could just play the chord and play the other chord. But I feel like I've heard people do something kind of like this. And that's just lifting the pedals off without stopping the notes. I'm sure there's licks that actually make that happen in a more interesting way, but still kind of sounds like something cool. So it's worth experimenting. It's worth trying these things that you might not understand yet because when you do them and realize that's kind of it, but not really, that's what's gonna inspire you to go online or go to a book or talk to a friend or a teacher and say, hey, I know that there's this thing that I'm supposed to be doing, but I don't really know what it is. I'm trying to do this kind of thing. But what's the real version of that? Or I'm trying to do this kind of thing. What, what is that really supposed to sound like? And you can then get that information from a bunch of different sources. But for instance, if you just play the exercises and you don't really just dip your toe in improvising a little bit or exploring a little bit, then you're definitely gonna be stuck with just the exercises that you learned. Useful as they may be, it's not really going to help you with what maybe inspired you to play the pedal steel in the first place or for instance, the banjo. So I hope this has been useful in some way. I've had a lot of fun working on this stuff, and I hope that this has somehow shed some light on the process of, of learning a new instrument. And let me know how it's going for you if, if you've been working on playing the banjo or any instrument for a couple weeks now, or a couple months, or a couple years. Let me know how this is going and if any of this resonates with you. Um, and uh, we'll be back in about another week 
to see where we're at. Maybe we'll even try to play a song or a melody or something even more musical than what we've done so far. Who knows? Also, if you're looking for some banjo content, obviously you can go to patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. That's where I post everything that you can't find on YouTube, which means over a hundred tabs for solos and melodies and fill tunes and backup examples and bonus practice tips, all kinds of stuff that you can't find here on YouTube. So you're gonna wanna check that out. Also, if you don't mind, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel and like this video. That's one of the things that makes these videos possible. So I really appreciate it. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.